Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Mac and T Show Podcast. Here are your hosts, Ryan McKay and T. David. This is the Mac and T Show. This is the Mac and T Show. We talk movies and TV shows. Sports and world news. Coasting like on a world cruise. Hosted by Brian McKay and T. Davis. Yeah. You can't tame us. We go on to the top, we're becoming famous. What time is it? It's time for the Mac and T Show. What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and T Show. Welcome back to the Mac and T Show podcast. The playoffs are set. We have a one versus four matchup of Clemson and Oklahoma in the Capital One Orange Bowl. And two versus three, Alabama versus Michigan State in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl. Both of those will be on New Year's Eve uh, with the winners to play for the national championship. I text my brother in law. When the playoff brackets came out, because he and I went to USM Alabama men's basketball game Friday night, and he was discussing football and things like that, and he said that you know he he would really like for the playoffs to come up with some sort of situation where he can get a little revenge on Oklahoma for two year two or three years ago where they beat the snot out of Alabama in the Sugar Bowl, and it is set up perfectly for him now. You got Alabama on one side, Oklahoma on the other. All they gotta do is win. Well, that's the problem. I like Clemson. I like that quarterback. Oklahoma good too, but yeah, things gonna be Clemson, Alabama. Um, do you feel like this is Alabama's championship to lose? You feel like they're the favorite? Uh, I think they. Them and Clemson, they like one and one A because Oklahoma, not that they, I mean, Oklahoma, I guess they tough too because they lost the early one to Texas, but then they still lost to Texas. Uh, <laughs> Michigan State, oh, they ain't that good. They good enough. I, I think they just on this roller coaster ride of luck. <laughs> right, they good enough because we got the whole field goal kicker situation. The Michigan kicker. <laughs> yeah. We got that whole situation that we can talk about. Right. And then then some luck went against them right for that one loss they got. Mm-hmm. And then, like, this game against Iowa was ugly. I really think that they ain't going to be able to stop the horse. He's going to just keep running. <laughs> He's going to run 50 times and 250 yards. And, uh, Alabama defense. Uh, they go Alabama and Clemson. That should be fun to watch. Um, yeah, I guess Alabama's defense is the reason I would get them the leg up. Yeah, I think they. The only other defense that I would say is better than theirs is ours, Florida's. Unfortunately, we don't have an <laughs> You had you had one. But it then it decided to take illegal substances. Then it's the and, drug, uh, drug, drug head, liar. Ugh. Okay, go ahead. Oh. oh, well, let's talk about this, though, right fast. All right. Let's talk about what is South Carolina thinking? Now, Mush Rat, <laughs> I mean, excuse me, Mush Champ yes. has won. His record as a head coach is 28 and 21. Now, mind you, me and Larry talk about this. Shout out, Larry. Talk about this all the time. That first season when we went 11-1, and one, that was purely the defense and some luck. His record is like 20, no, uh, let's see, 18 and 20 or something. Like, he, he below 500. How do you hire him for your head coach? And all the head coaches out there that's got some kind of success. Do they just want to be bad? Do they want to go back to the before the old ball coach age? Is that what they want to do? I I don't really even see what they could have seen in him in at Auburn because I mean coming into the year, terrible. coming into the year they were quote unquote supposed to win the West and 
except for those last few games where they actually played a little defense. I mean, they didn't do much on defense for the entire season. So, I'm, you know, we're thinking that he got some blackmail information on these people. So, uh... <laughs> It don't make sense to me. Like, you got coaches out there. They could have went out to the Texas coach. Now, not to say that he won it, mm. but at least we would know why. Yeah, he's had a good run with every overhand coach in the SEC. But football players know coaches, and they know football, the real ones. Right. And so they'll recognize who he is. I- I'd be hard-pressed. They gonna, it's, South Carolina is not a great place to recruit. Anyway, and you talking about the kids? No, they saw what happened at Florida. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. Gonna, that's pretty uh, relevant. <laughs> yeah, ain't, no, ain't no offensive guys gonna want to come there. No good quarterback is gonna want to come there. They gonna they gonna say, "Ooh, Driscoll was a number one quarterback or number two at his position or something when he came out." Look what happened. <laughs> no, yeah. uh, he, that that was a terrible decision. Oh. Terrible. Speaking of uh, terrible decisions, Treon Harris, I just want to touch on this real quick because I think you had the quote of the weekend or the text of the weekend when you said that the backup quarterback must <laughs> must be must be blind in one eye and can't see out the other <laughs> for them not to put him in. <laughs> it got to be. It, it, that, that's all it is. It's got to be because I cannot fathom. (laughs) Even Baylor. That ain't lost, but they had, was that kid a wide receiver or something trying to run the team? I think so, yeah. Okay, so even Baylor, yeah, they had got down to injury-wise. They had no choice. Right. But how much worse could that other kid have done? Unless he got butterfingers and just can't even catch a hike or something. (laughs) Like, what? What worse could he have done? No, I mean, it, it was worth at least looking at him. And not even in the Alabama game. Put him in at the end of one of those games right there before the end of the season. Yeah. FAU, Vanderbilt, anybody. We barely want him anyway. Treon was turning the ball over in, against Vanderbilt, so if he got fumble problems, it wouldn't have been no different from what Treon was doing. I'm telling you, that boy can't see. And uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. They probably didn't tell us about you know how uh before uh dang I can't think of his name, he gone to coach Oklahoma City. before he left Florida he decided he wanted to get a kid with one arm. How you how you just leave Florida and you forget Billy Donovan's name? That's how he that went out of sight, out of mind. So Billy left and he had the one arm bandit guy. Now we got a blind kid on the football team that they ain't told us about. Mm. No offense handicap people. Let's see other notable bowl games. Um, New Year's another New Year's Eve day game. Uh, you got Houston and Florida State and Chick Fil A Peach Bowl. Your Gators on New Year's Day will take on the Michigan Wolverines, led by Jim Harbaugh, in the Buffalo oh, Wild why? Wing Citrus Bowl. Why? <laughs> uh, Ohio State and Notre Dame will play in the Fiesta Bowl. Ole Miss takes on Oklahoma State down here in New Orleans at the All-State Sugar Bowl. Well, let's and, stop right there. Yeah, well, let's get the last right one. Last one. Hold I'm on. I don't like the preacher. Stop right there. Okay, okay. go ahead. <laughs> no, the hour, and then the hour in Stanford in the Rose Bowl. But go ahead. I am really, really nervous. Because I don't know what the hell is going on. You thinking it's going to be another TCU debacle? I'm telling you, because this is why I'm nervous. Because I saw what happened against Arkansas. And that kid, allegedly, I'm doing my quote finger people, right. allegedly, <laughs> was not a good thrower. Well, he probably threw 6,000 yards against us. Now, this kid, Mason, that guy. Yeah, Mason uh, Rudolph, Randolph, Rudolph, whatever, for uh, Oklahoma State, he can throw. They can probably, that second string guy can probably just throw it anywhere near Washington. Yeah. And he gonna catch. Washington gonna have probably about three, four touchdowns. Cause he's a good. I like. Hey, him. Mike, Mike, Hilt, Mike Hilton, them boys gonna shut him down. Oh okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, I, that's my dream, but I don't. 
I wish we had to play the running team or somebody that don't want to throw the ball. I hope that we learned from last year, but I mean, clearly, like you, like you brought up the Arkansas game, uh, there's cases to be made that it haven't really learned, or maybe they're just not capable. Maybe we just don't have the guns, you know, in the back, in the uh, with the cornerbacks and safeties. Maybe, maybe they just don't have it. I don't know. What happened? I, like, aren't they all returning? Didn't they all play last year? Yeah. So why, why the setback? Well, they did have some injuries throughout the year. You know, that wasn't really noticeable because a lot of the SEC teams like to run the ball, so there wasn't a lot of passing. Right. Um, right. So, yeah, it's gonna you know it's gonna be interesting to see how we how we match up. You know, last year our Big Twelve. Matchup with TCU didn't go so well, and, and you know I I'm, I sat there and cooked all that food and got all that stuff ready, and I couldn't hardly eat. I was so upset. <laughs> how bad it was. <laughs> oh, Lord, I've man. never I've never seen somebody dab and sneeze before. When you dab like, and sneeze, I was, like, man, I was trying to cover my mouth, and then you started having me laughing. <laughs> oh, praise Jesus. Um, I I don't know this. Could, I hope it's not as ugly as it could be, because not only do they throw the ball, I mean they moving fast. Yeah, they're coming to the line and they're slinging so, it over and over and over. With with so much time off, you're gonna have to get used to the speed of the game in the first couple of plays, minutes, whatever. This could be bad, but hopefully, they, um. Uh, your boy, that's why they pay him millions of dollars. Get them ready. How to tie it. I don't know what Florida going to do against Michigan because if we can't get the blind boy from Bartimaeus to come in and take Treon out, then I I don't know what to say. I, that's all. Yeah, uh, it's going to be tough to play against Jim Harbaugh's defense. Right. What we ain't going to be able to. Oh, I can't. I don't want to think about it. Listen. I don't want to think about either of these games. Y'all's defense, your defense is going to keep you in games until they just wear out. Like they, they get did tired, against, though. They yeah. get tired. They yeah. were fired against Alabama. Then it was like, whew, we'll start falling off. Well, it's because, you know, the offense is a bunch of three and outs real quick. They're right back on the field. Exactly. All I need him to do is to take care of the ball and get a couple of first downs. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's going to bring us to our first break. Uh, as far as the games with next uh, next week's episode, we'll give our predictions on all the New Year's Day and New Year's Eve games. But uh, that's going to bring us to our first break. On the other side, we'll get into a good NFL and uh, NBA talk. And much more after that. This has been the Mac and T Show. Thank you for listening. <laughs> What time is it? Welcome back to the Mac and T Show podcast, NFL. Uh, the New England Patriots yesterday took another L on the chin with a 35 28 loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, it was a lot worse than this. I mean, they were up a couple touchdowns. Patriots made a little run at the end uh, to, in, a, in an effort to tie it up. But uh, are the Patriots' injuries are they are just too much to handle for them? I mean, this is two losses in a row. They're they're without Gronk, Deion Lewis, Julian Edelman still out. Danny Amendola was back yesterday, but he might as well have been sitting on the bench because he was ineffective. Well, apparently, and I thought they were supposed to be so good. Oh well. If you're good, you're supposed to next man up. Ain't that's what they say? What you know, it, it, regardless, you don't. If you're any kind of good, any kind of a Super Bowl contender, you don't lose to the Eagles. And then that's what I was about to say. Then it ain't like you lost to a, a good team, right? So let's not put that on the injuries. Y'all just want to prepare. Oh well, I don't like them anyway. Um, 
never really thought either way about him until this whole Brady fiasco with, oh, I, I'm not going to do whatever and all that drama over the summer. Yeah. Um, but this whole season, but we've been saying, football been terrible, really. Unless you're a Panthers fan or something, I guess. Because it's just been so many injuries. And if they continue to change the rules, I mean, they're going to be playing flag football at some point. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking about you yesterday because I don't remember what game it was. Yes, I do. Um, I want to say it was Tennessee-Jacksonville game. Don't ask me why I was watching it. It must have been on on, on Red Zone at the time. <laughs> but uh, one of the Titans players comes and, you know, kind of takes his arm going to tackle uh, Blake Bortles for Jacksonville. Blake Bortles ducks. And he when he ducks, head. he got hit in the head. They called, you know, the personal foul, 15 yards. Right. Couple plays later, same guy comes at the Bortles. Bortles doesn't duck. And it was almost, it was really a nasty hit. The first hit wasn't that nasty. It was just head, right. you know, hit him in the head. It was almost a nasty hit. They didn't call anything. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, he caused himself to get hit in the head. That boy wasn't going for his head, and they called him for 15 yards. And then this boy dang near takes his head off, and t- you know, takes his you know neck off his shoulders. And <clears throat> I don't know, I think the referee is, is new rules are bad in general, but then the referee being, being so inconsistent is hurting the game. But this is the thing. All they do is see a head hit. Now, yeah. watch it. Um, we ain't call, talking about college, but just officiating in these rules in general. Watching uh, I forget what college game it was, but the kid, he didn't call a fair catch, and so he wound up ducking down to catch the ball, and the kid hit him. He didn't aim, I mean, he didn't aim for his head, but yeah, they hit head because when he ducked and I'm coming at you, well, that's probably what happens. I mean, you usually lower your center of gravity to make a tackle. Right. Like, I don't play football, but I can see. So, now this kid gets ejected. 15-yard penalty. They won. I don't know if he's going to have to sit out that whole bowl game or half or however they do that. But this is getting to be outrageous. And then you got boo-boo the fool, Tom Brady talking about well, you protect quarterback's legs, protect linemen's legs, you should protect the wide receiver's legs. Again, if we start saying we can't hit wide receivers below the knees or something stupid, I don't know what y'all think football is for. It's a contact sport. Um, you know the risk when you play. At least in most occasions with quarterback, you can kind of, you know, handle how you hit the quarterback. With wide receivers, they're moving at such a rate of speed. It's it's hard to just justify, you know, being able to tackle them just perfectly every time. That's why you see so many horse collars. Because they don't mean to do it. They're just trying to bring them down any means necessary. And in the flow of the game, it happens. But even with quarterbacks now, when you got people that can run, you got the Rodgers of the world, you got the Cam Newton's of the world, you can't be slowing down saying, well, I don't want to hit him, and then whoop, he get by you. The Blaine Gabbards of the world. Well, the Blaine Gabbards, my bad. I'm sorry, Blaine. Didn't mean to leave you out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just getting to a point where, you know, I'm going to stop watching it because I'm just tired of the foolishness, especially in the NFL. I enjoy college football too much to stop watching it, but the NFL, I can really do it out, especially the 49ers are god awful, and that's not going to change it in their future. So, I, I, I'm tired of that. But, but good, uh, congratulations, Paul St. Pierre. I almost lost my hand with a firecracker. Uh, he played yesterday. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. The, word is, the word on the street was, th- before he passed out, he said, don't cut my hand off. Yeah, he had to tell the doctors not to, not to remove his hand. Now, yeah. he lucky that they listened. Because right. they could have cut it on off. <laughs> And he woke up and be like, what did I say? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, he actually, he's been in there a couple of weeks now, and he's he's actually made a difference for the Giants. I mean, 
Well, not enough because they keep losing in the end with the foolishness. So, yeah. way to go, Pace. Defense can't do everything. <laughs> And Eli, 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 wrong, wrong Manny, Manny, which one of y'all Manny, Manny? Uh, you brought up the Panthers in your soliloquy uh, a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the Panthers remained undefeated yesterday, going twelve and zero despite a valiant effort. You know, I love to use that phrase uh, by the New Orleans Saints. Cam Newton was 28 for 41, 331 yards, and five touchdowns. Um, I think he's he's got to be the favorite for MVP this year. If that boy don't win MVP, this thing is real. There's no way. Nobody would have said these guys would have been undefeated. Uh, if they win or lose, but yes. They won. They beat the Okay. Yeah, I, I, I know you're probably looking at my notes. My notes yeah. were uh, were pre uh, pre them running down the field on the Saints defense and scoring at the end of the game. <laughs> my, my. Okay. So nobody, even if they had lost, nobody would have saw this come. Nobody, nobody. So and he is the only reason because he's their main offense. And if God forbid anything happened to him, then they're gonna be limited in what they can do. So there's no way. I mean, there's no way. I mean, there is a way, but if he doesn't win, then it's rigged. Like, right. That's that's just it, point blank, period. Uh, let's see. And one, yeah. one more thing I want to say. Uh. Shout out to the Immaculate Reception Part 2. His son caught that Hail Mary pass against the Detroit Lions. Um, it was really smooth because he wasn't even in the end zone. Like, he was measuring the ball up from, like, the 10 and then just started going back, back, back. Yeah. Ruined the Detroit Lions Thanksgiving with that Richard Rodgers. Yeah. The Rodgers to Rodgers. Yeah. And Rodgers to Rodgers. And lean Lakers. back, pull it in. That's how you're supposed to do it. Well, with that that uh fake uh face mask called. But anyway, all right. <laughs> another, another time. <laughs> Uh, moving on to the NBA, the Golden State Warriors continue their undefeated streak to open up the season with a one one fourteen to ninety eight win over the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, they're twenty two and zero on the season, and in, in this game, which has been happening here recently a lot, uh, Steph Curry outscored outscored Brooklyn the whole team by himself in the third quarter. Uh, <laughs> What do you have? 28 points on the It was like 14 to 12, I believe. Oh, didn't he have a 28 point quarter here? He recently? did, here recently, yes, and, and set out the fourth, yes. Um, He went for 44, right? Uh huh. 44, right? Yeah. Right. You know I look 44. I know, 44. Um, so, uh, well, y'all don't know, 44 is my number. Thank y'all for coming. Um, yeah, yeah, back when back when uh back when you were Amanda Butler's back forward in, anyway. Back in seventy three. <laughs> <laughs> back in seventy three with the shorty shorts and the high stocks with the chucks. Forty four. Listen. So my prediction is, is is coming more and more clear for well, we about uh, to talk about your prediction. Yeah. Because if Kyrie Irving is not bad, they're gonna beat them too. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean my 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 Christmas Day prediction is totally predicated on Kyrie being back. Well, I'm glad you put that perfect in there because you didn't have that on there first. Yeah, it, yeah, it was totally predicated on that. And I'm just using all these big words today. Uh, well, since I got your book, I see that book on your desk. In my dictionary, predicated and soliloquy, and uh. I got your yes, your thesaurus on the desk. I see it. I mean, I. I just don't see them losing before then. Still, as I look at the schedule, um, and God knows, LeBron. Well, this is what I would say. I know they want to chase this record, but I don't think they're gonna get to thirty-three like the Lakers had. And you gotta have some. I know, you know, Luke Long is just you know doing whatever and doing whatever the coach telling to. But at some point, listen, listen, and I know listen, he gets whoa, the whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. 
Not, oh. I said Luke Long. What yeah. is his name? Yeah. yeah. And Luke, Luke Walk. Luke Walk. Don't, don't, Luke don't, Walk. don't put yeah. a father bull in there. Don't put a father bull. My bad. Luke Walk. So. If the NBA ain't going to give him credit, you got to give him credit. I'm giving him credit. How they, oh, saying, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, I'm going to let you finish, but I have to say this. How are they going to give him Coach of the Month? And and know. and his record is zero and zero. Right, Give him the credit for the wins. If you ain't won nothing, how you get to be the best coach in the month? Yeah. Uh, for foolishness. But I know Curry getting rest on these games when you know they have blowouts, but they need to start resting him because it's nice to go after the thirty three. I don't think he's gonna get it, but you really don't want his legs to be dead. Come playoffs. No, that's when it play. matters. Because this is the first time that he, his legs have played that deep into the summer with them going for this championship run. Yeah. And then the summer, you know, it's over faster than it normally would be. So he don't really even know how his legs going to respond to playing this long back to back. They probably should get him some rest, like they said, um, the front down the other day. Uh, and got beat up by Miami, but you gotta think about um, have some forethought like Pop does with the Spurs, and they should be good enough to beat some of these teams that's coming up in their schedule anyway without him. But right. maybe not, because right. Clay Thompson is full gone. Yeah, he he up and down for sure. He's full gone, and uh, I'm glad we. You mentioned the boys, and I and Luke Long came out of my mouth because I have a question for you. Because me and Nick, shout out Nick, <laughs> we were talking about this. He said that they were talking about, which you probably heard because I don't even have TV, but with the 96 Bulls be able to beat this team. Now, this is my, you know, I ain't no Bulls fan, I ain't no Jordan fan. Right. But I, Rodman was on that team, right? Yes. They wouldn't know what to do with the 96 Bulls. Why? Because they would put Pippen on Curry, and they would have Rodman, Gordon, um, what, what's that boy's name that they do the pick and pop with? Well, Draymond Green. Draymond Green. Now, like everybody else have to worry because they four man or whoever they got, or Draymond can't switch and stay with in front of Curry. Right. Rodman is going to be able to, he's, Savvy enough, he's quick enough, athletic enough that he's going to be a problem. But Curry, Curry ain't just going to be whipsy doopsy doing him like he would the average four player. Pippen to be fine on his rotation because he's a big boy, even though he's skinny. He's long enough that Draymond ain't going to just take him down on the block and then they be like, oh, we're going to try to isolate. Mm -hmm. Jordan is a good defender. I, I don't see, and I don't know what they're going to do on the other end. <laughs> Defensively, uh, who gonna guard Jordan? Not any, not Clay Thompson. <laughs> not, uh, uh. Clay gonna get it in the line down there on that block. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clay gonna be like, well, "What? You can't put Curry too little down there." Yeah, I mean Curry, Lord, no, I don't even know who said who think this would even be a match. Well, uh, the '96, '97 Bulls are the team that went seventy-two and ten for everybody who doesn't know the history. Um, I, I just, I, yeah, I don't think they could match up. I don't think they could match up with them. Who gonna call Joy? Nobody. Harrison Barnes. So, so you depending on because Green is gonna be negated. Because, like I said, he's an energy guy. Yes, he passes better and he shoots the three better, but he's not gonna get all these great looks. Right. Like he does, and Rodman gonna make him work for his. Because Rodman's going to be all over the offensive boards. So he's going to have to work a little extra hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I still don't know who y'all going to have to guard uh, Jordan. And then if y'all be trying to double team and then Curry just standing over there two, three, I don't really know what y'all going to do. <laughs> but what's Hodges with that group? Curry no, Hodges no, Craig had Curry was. was. That was Curry. It was Curry. Yeah, and Ron Harper was point guard. Yeah. So all they're going to do is move Ron Harper onto Iguodala or somebody. Because Ron ain't going to be a quicker foot to be going nobody else. Uh. <laughs> so they would just move him over. 
Yeah, yeah, and it, I mean it's nice to fantasize, and it's something that you can play on NBA 2K, whatever, 16, 17, whatever, whatever years they'll have something a little fantasy matchup you can have. But anyway, uh, I think that's gonna bring us to our next break. On the other side, we'll get into a little review of the Wiz Live. And empires. And oh Lord! And empires. Uh, fall season finale episode. But all that for the other side. This has been the Mac and T show. Thank you for listening. <laughs> What time is it? What time is it? Welcome back to the Mac and T Show podcast. The Wiz Live. Uh, this past week. Ta-da, 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 ta-da. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, past week episode on on NBC. I I thought it was really good. Um, I it, it had two things that I really like in. Re- well, three things that I really like in remakes. One, time relevance. Two, um, they no one on the no one on the in the in the act in any of the actors, no one on any of the producers, directors, anything has publicly tried to you know compare it to the original. I thought that was very good. You know, made it its own thing, and then I really liked the Broadway play aspect. I, I, I thought that that was, you know, kind of made it unique. Um, Shanice Williams, they played Dorothy, is a you know a budding star. Elijah Kelly, they played Scarecrow, needs to be in more stuff. I mean, the only thing I can remember him being in is uh, the other remake where John Travolta played an old woman, uh, uh, Hairspray. He was he, he, he was in that. Uh and Uzo Aduba, who is Crazy Eyes on Orange's New Black, played Glenda the Good, and she was awesome, even though she was only on there a few minutes, got down, sang her song, and did her thing. Uh, negatives, common. Can't act. You know I and and I'm sorry. Yes, I'm probably biased because just right, his basketball performance and just right has ruined him ever from being anything good for me. Oh no! So yeah, uh, so that's all I have to say about that. I know you you well, haven't got a chance to watch it yet. I watched a little piece. I watched a little piece over here now. You know, NBC is not like ABC. You can pull up stuff the next day and watch it. Right. So I was able to get a glimpse of it. And I'll say this. You said time re- relevance. If you watch The Wiz, it's, it's pretty much never going to not be relevant. Like the black man can't get a taxi. That's why every time. <laughs> then you got graffiti. If you go to New York now, you're always going to find some graffiti. Miss one, you're going to find the number on them. <laughs> Like, it is. Oh, I know. On the little part where the line going out to the, 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 the uh, and then her, him and uh, Dorothy get into the uh, the powder and then they pass out. I don't know if they did that on the stage play. Mm-mm. Okay, so anyway, they missed that. Um, What I didn't like was, I liked the um, rearrangement of most of the songs. Yeah. I know time constraints may have been the reason that they did not do some of the stuff, um, but like you cannot Nipsey Rock. Well, not that ain't Nipsey. It was a uh, who was that? Who who played the uh, Neo. The boy that sang Neo. Yeah. He's supposed to have two songs because they. Sh- I know you know my favorite song is Slice and Oil to me, but he sings the other one. What would I do if I could feel? Which is the point because he don't have a part. Right. <laughs> I don't know how you skip that that song. Right. But anyway. Why did what what happened to Toto? That's the one. Yeah, that's another negative for me. Uh, he was there at the beginning and there at the end, 
And I guess the dog wasn't trained well enough to be there throughout the day. to get a dog. If you got a lion, a person playing a lion, playing person that playing a dog. Mm-hmm. Yes. A little kid to play Toto. Right. Stage play. We would have been fine. We understood that. So I was a little disappointed that Toto got kicked out of the show so fast. Yeah, but, oh, Toto got cut. <laughs> yeah, he got kicked out. The wardrobes are all awesome. From what I saw, wardrobes are awesome. Um, yeah. But we'll see. Like I said, I just fast forward to the parts that I like, which is, you can't win. You can't break even. Now you can't get out of the game. People keep saying things are going to change, but it looks just like the stay in the same. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen. Now, Ooh, now nobody, Michael, nobody Michael. will Michael. ever, nobody will ever touch Michael's performance as Scarecrow. But Elijah yes. Kelly came very, very he close. Really he yes, because I liked his rendition. Yeah, I liked his rendition. Uh, let's see. Moving on to Empire, the fall season finale. Uh, we know Lee Daniels from experience in the season one. Uh, he he likes to throw a lot of twists. And turns in his finales, and this one did not disappoint. Uh, first twist, Mimi Whiteman, oh, yeah. she drops a, the first bombshell of the show, uh, introducing her wife Camilla, um, as in Naomi Campbell's Camilla, as in Hakeem's old flame, as in the one that Lucius sent away at the end of season one. And so, then the reason why ha- ha- Hakeem don't like his dad. <laughs> yes. So, uh, let's see. Second twist. Mimi proposes a board of directors vote to remove Lucius as CEO of Empire, citing many issues that Lucius has that could be detrimental to the company. Uh, the third twist. Hakeem had the deciding vote. And after a quick highlight like flashback of all the wrong and that Lucius has done to him, all the things him and Lucius been through, you know, in the, in the two seasons and before, all the flashbacks we had, he votes Lucius out. So Lucius is out as CEO. Uh, fourth twist, Rhonda, Andre's pregnant wife, is pushed down the stairs of their new <gasps> mansion. And although, although it is presumed to be Anika, because as everything leading up to that would make you think it's Anika, the culprit is never revealed, which I'm assuming is going to be a big storyline when they return in March, um, because the hashtag that was started by the Empire tw- Twitter account, uh, Who Pushed Rhonda, was trending on Twitter all night long, so... That's going to be something to look out for. Uh, the fifth and final twist of the show, Jamal and Lucius were both nominated for Song of the Year. Uh, and, uh, it, and they had these nominations going on throughout the episode. It was kind of like uh, American Academy of Music Awards or the, uh, Grammys, something like that type show. Uh, yeah. They had those nominations going on throughout the episode, and Jamal got a bunch of different nominations, including his duet with the King. Uh, so it's going to be interesting because you can tell there was some animosity. They had a little moment where they kind of stared into each other's eyes when it happened. So him and uh, Lucius, that's going to be something to see see what goes on there, because you know Lucius is already showing a little jealousy towards him. Lucius so fake. I don't know. I, I finally watched. Okay, so Lucius is um is a mess, and Jamal gonna find out his true colors because I've been telling y'all he ain't just changed his mind about that boy being gay overnight, and, and that's gonna come out. Yeah, and he'll run with his mama. And both of him and the boy will be with uh Lion Dynasty or whatever. Yes. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where they go. And like I said, they return in March. So we got a little time to... We got a lot, we got a lot of time. Yeah, to digest, you know, what's, what's been going down. Uh, I'm still I'm still kicking, still interested in it. I, it, it he, he didn't... 
uh, it wasn't like they were boom, 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 like it was at the end of season one, where I was thinking, Lord, they done showed everything. Are they not going to have any more seasons? Uh, well, I might have missed this, but what is the deal with Jay Papa and... Oh, girl. And, uh... Something's and, gonna and, happen with that. And Precious. Yeah. They but haven't they touched on it since that since episode. That they haven't okay. touched on it again. Since okay. he became part of, uh, the Gutter Life Records label. Right. And, well, I hope they, uh... So they may, they may revisit it. I don't yeah, know, cause, Pre- was, cause like, Pre- Precious hasn't been seen very much. I, yeah, she ain't been on there a lot, and that was good to have her a little, little spot, and then... Next thing, Jay Popper was gone. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. But, um, yeah, I'm sad because I don't know what I'm going to do on Wednesday nights now. <laughs> have to find something. Well, I'm sure something will come up. Yes. Whether that's Netflix. I don't even know what day that show come on that we like now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Luke Cage. All right. Luke Cage. Yes, indeed. Coming out. They can put that on a Wednesday, so... Uh, next episode, yes. ne- next episode of a podcast, we will be talking about Jessica Jones. Yes, yes. yes. excited for that. So, uh, but I believe that's going to be our show for today. Um, as always, I am one of your co-hosts, Brian McKay, and I am with T. It is still great to be at Florida Gator Davis. Go Citrus! <laughs> and I, I'm worried about that, but. Lion Bar- Bartimaeus, come on. We're going to try to get you in now. I'm going to start a hashtag. <laughs> You're going to start a hashtag movement. We Bring. want 3B. We want 3B. Oh, like, no. What is 3B? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, Lord. Well, this has been the Mag and T Show. Thank y'all for listening. This is the Mac and T Show. This is the Mac and T Show. We talk movies and TV shows. Sports and world news. Coasting like on a world cruise. Hosted by Brian McKay and T Davis. Yeah. You can't tame us. We go on to the top, we're becoming famous. What time is it? It's time for the Mac and T Show. What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and T Show.